Hello everyone, my name is Dimitris Suropoulis and I am the HR Director of Crescent Enterprises. Just a bit of an intro about me, I have a diversified uh, uh, professional background in uh, many multinational companies in sectors like energy, telecommunications and FMCG. I, uh, throughout the years, I have acquired a lot of skill sets and experiences that helped me joining a company like Crescent Enterprises about uh, two months ago. I consider myself that I have done my, uh, the right moves and I have made the right choices, but I also think I was a bit lucky. Sometimes I say you have to work hard to be lucky. I'm proud and honored to be part of this event, uh, which unfortunately an invisible enemy has kept us away from each other and making uh, use of technology has helped in order to make this event uh, come to uh, a reality. We live in new times unprecedented times and the whole world is in a lockdown post pandemic we will have to face the changes this has brought to our lives and to our working environment as we knew it and we will have to rapidly adjust we have to rapidly adjust to those changes by acquiring new skills mainly my talk will be about the skills we need to have you need to have in order to enter uh, the marketplace but also kind of a prediction how the world might look after COVID-19. Um, it is estimated by 2025 that we would lose over 5 million jobs to automation. However, there will also be a vast array of new jobs available to university graduates, mostly related to knowledge creation and innovation. You will need to consider choosing a, a field of study that, as we call it, it should be future-proof. Um, those jobs that fall under the umbrella of STEM, um, the uh, science, technology, engineering and mathematics, create a lot of opportunities. And those jobs are being created at a much faster rate than students who graduate can fill them. And the skills underpinning success in these fields are not always uh, taught in the classroom. There are some overarching shifts poised to change the nature of work itself over the next decade. That includes a demand of new skills and strategies that would help people to thrive in future work environments. With the world moving as fast as it is, we need to become a society of people who are always learning new things. Um, technological leaps, demographic evolution, uh, globalization, are just few of those economic drivers shaping the fundamental nature of education and work. 85% approximately of jobs that will exist in 2030 haven't been invented yet. And about 65% of children starting school now would one day hold jobs that they do not exist as of now. We never had before jobs like social media specialist, manager or director of, of that field. And that is not a job you get after you graduate from a, a course in the university. So consider that some of them will be just a part of the experience. We are seeing significant changes in the labor market transpiring as we stand here today. These are happening now and they are irreversible. Automation and digitization are spurning new business models across every sector. Businesses are adapting, adapting to meet employees' demand for greater choice and flexibility. Access to real-time learning, increased autonomy, a sense of stability, and the ability uh, to work on personal and meaningful projects. These today are few of the key drivers of global workplace transformation. Recent studies show that a young person like you, uh, that you enter the workplace, um, uh, you, have, you will go uh, on an average, uh, probably in your career, through 11 jobs. Data from um, a millennial survey back in 2018 showed that um, about 50% of the millennials expect to leave their jobs within the first two to three years. This is creates, a, 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 of course, it creates a challenge to the companies and to the HR departments, how to attract, how to develop and how to retain when they have to go through this kind of massive turnover every, every two to three years. 
But again, this is an opportunity for us because we'll create more opportunities for you to join uh, the companies as you, as you graduate as young talents. The model of having a job for life does not exist anymore. When change comes at such a rapid pace, many of the learnings will be in the moment sought to learn technology of today for the workplace of tomorrow, which is not always a practical approach. Consider that uh, students entering a four-year engineering program in September may not have skills that industry is looking for when they graduate four years after in 2024. The demand for blockchain engineers, for example, has increased by 400% in the last three years. Key considerations, I would say, when thinking about pursuing uh, such roles in the challenges, it, 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 the challenges that accompany them. Um, challenges like new and emerging field with very little formal training around. As we said, like there are, there are jobs that they haven't been, uh, you, you cannot be trained or they haven't been taught in any university or in any courses. You must have the ability of adopting a new mindset, which focuses on efficiency, scalability, and uh, distributed computing. And you must understand that there is more to just learning another program language. You have to add more to that. Uh, one of the major skills that we look for at this stage uh, is problem solving. Learning agility and ability to discover and process information those skills are will be invaluable. What is key is to home in on the skills needed to pick up these technologies at a pace quick enough so that you're not left behind. The focus becomes less on the what skills you need and more on the how you will absorb and learn them. The skills you have today may not be widely used tomorrow or may become irrelevant altogether. Therefore, the, la the, the larger challenge for the future lies in developing soft skills. This is applicable across roles and industries. Let me name you a few which I believe are the, the most important now in, in our marketplace. Uh, confidence. Let me start with confidence. You need to have confidence. In the job hunting field, you're on your own. You have to prove why you're better than the rest. Um, people you know, uh, people you've studied with. And you need to be against them and the recruiters to choose you in order to start your career. So every detail and everything matters. Emotional and social intelligence is the second part. For everything that can be replaced by digital technologies and artificial intelligence, emotional and social intelligence remain uniquely human capability. Of course, there is an issue of the ethical intelligence that AI can master yet. That is why we still have an, a major advantage against uh, uh, AI these days. Uh, the third one I would say is uh, critical thinking. Critical thinking is the ability to think clearly and rationally, understanding the logical connection between ideas. The essence, the, the essence uh, critical thinking requires you to use your ability to reason. It is more about being an active learner rather than a passive recipient of information. In any job you will get in the future, one thing I will urge you is to challenge the status quo. Things that have remained there for years, nobody has, has touched them. Go there and if you think you can change it and if you think it's the right thing to change, challenge it. New media literacy. Understanding various media platforms and how to best communicate effectively in them are valuable skills that robots cannot match anytime soon. Obviously, business acumen is very important with opportunities in innovation and entrepreneurship and the rise of the gig economy. Understanding how a business work is very essential. Even if you are working for a company and you have to better understand how the business operates, Whatever, whatever, whatever you do in, in, in your career, you should go through and understand all the departments of the company so you get a very good grip of, of the operation of, of it. During the years of the financial crisis of 2008, we have seen a, a, an increase in startup businesses. Um, this has been mainly uh, occurred with funds of other companies, 
uh, we have seen it in the forms of grants, awards, or, if the, in, or even in the um, form of a direct investment. I believe this trend will continue to rise after the pandemic. We're going to face a new way of life and work. The coronavirus started out as a health pandemic, but the outbreak will create long-lasting changes to the way we live and work. It was truly catalyzed change and pushed us all to overhaul our traditional ways of working. Years from now, we will look back uh, as amongst the devastation, one message will resound. We will recall how the coronavirus outbreak was the moment when the way we used to work, learn, collaborate and innovate fundamentally changed. Leadership and company culture are being put to the test as the way we work changed overnight. As we all wait uh, for things to go back to normal, whatever the normal means after the, the pandemic, it is clearly evident that uh, the dawn of a traditional work model is coming to an end. The key question remains, will this enforced period of working from home lead to a greater rollout of this model of working in the future? or whether it will remain an emergency measure implemented only in crisis. I doubt. I think that there is going to be a fundamental change on that. Working from home becomes the new norm these days. And as a rise in the telecommuting trends worldwide, level of digital platforms is essential to reshape everything from how we communicate to how we work, how we stay informed and how we connect with each other. So these days we have seen uh, platforms that were not known to us. Um, uh, every company has invested a lot of money behind, uh, just to name a few brands, uh, behind uh, Google, Microsoft, uh, with Teams, with um, uh, Zoom, with Webex from Cisco, uh, with uh, Skype for business. So you name, we name just a few platforms and we will see more investments behind that. With terms such as freelancing, uh, contract work and telecommuting commonplace, um, the nature of office work, office space and the traditional nine to five hours we work uh, uh, daily are changing to keep up with the digital age. Remote work. Uh, this, is, this is what we all face today and this is what I'm currently doing. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to present in, in a way where I'm locked down in my house and using the technology just to bring to you uh, part of this uh, talk. We have all experienced a shift uh, in the way we work. The ability to adapt to that and focusing outside the traditional office space are key considerations for the workforces of tomorrow. Um, even students, online education, uh, the waves of change are not only experienced in the workplace, but also in the classroom. Millions of students, as we speak, including you, are forced to follow homeschooling. Learning outside the confines of a classroom takes grit and, I'm sorry, it takes grit and discipline. Uh, global connectivity. Now, travel becomes more unnecessary, I would say. And with the freedom afforded by new technologies, we have more choices than ever before. Choices of, that, that makes us, that help us not only on how we're going to work, but where we would like to work. So traveling, uh, traveling is, is, is a big question. Eventually, we will overcome the coronavirus and go back to some of uh, sort of normalcy. Certain uh, pre-COVID standards, pre-COVID-19 standards, such as flying around the world to meet clients or visit other offices, well, will be questions by management. Uh, management will calculate the cost of everything, of airfare, hotel stays, car rentals, and even restaurants, and deem them unnecessary in most of the cases. We probably will face a permanently flexible future. Remote working will be viewed with entirely new importance for post-COVID-19. There will be significant and permanent transition to a more remote working even after the COVID-19 clears. Uh, in uh, uh, 
and, and that probably will be triggered just uh, uh, under the fear of, of the next pandemic, which it, it is it is predicted that it's it's more rare to happen from now on because we learned many uh, things uh, from this one. More investments will be made to platforms and technology to maximize efficiency is this new standard, as we said. Uh, investments in new platforms or investments in the current platforms. Prioritization of uh, the work-life balance is vital. Although it is convenient and comfortable uh, when working from home, it can be a challenge for professionals to draw a line between home and work-life. For me, it is essential to follow a schedule. A schedule that will, will have a start time and an end time. We need to create a routine within the day, a routine that you wake up, you start working and you know when to finish. And this is imperative as it can easily derail and lose that balance. And, and, and of course, uh, losing that balance, it, it creates some balance in the family situation. Working from home also comes with benefits. Companies that uh, were once concerned about potential pitfalls and costs uh, to business now are seeing them new opportunities and innovative solution for streamlining processes to save time. If we consider how long it takes to get to the office during uh, peak times and, and the frustration experienced by employees, we can see the benefits of working from home uh, will bring. Flexible work also provides more time to focus on health as uh, a key value. Employees can, uh, from now on, as we speak today, every one of us, uh, spend time that would otherwise have been wasted commuting to take regular breaks and spend time in health beneficial activities, such as when allowed walking or exercising, uh, um, uh, workout uh, in-house uh, throughout the day. Um, uh, mitigating also this by, by mitigating the effects of uh, a sedentary lifestyle. Um, uh, probably you also face the same thing that we all face, how to keep fit and how technology also has changed this with private um, uh, classes over the internet or live uh, classes uh, for yoga or workouts. So this is what we have to go through now. Uh, the impact in that is that less stressed employees contribute to improve workplace morale and, increased pro and they do have increased productivity. Uh, as long as systems are running smoothly and technology is efficient, the experience is a positive one all around. So this is what has helped, especially now these days, our companies, and I'm, I'm, I'm basically I'm talking about UAE, where systems, phones, uh, platforms, internet uh, had pretty much faced the, the, the overload and, and they have managed to keep uh, people productive even when they are working from home. So this movement toward an agile work is, 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 is coming and might be imminent. With remote work, uh, teams become more separated actually, uh, and many will begin collaborating with other employees uh, outside their departments, which is, which is very, very healthy and very important. Uh, another trend in the world of agile work is growing beyond software development into finance, marketing, operations, and other parts of the organizations with the concept of self-organizing teams. This is, this is kind of a new concept uh, of the self-organizing teams. Agile teams are self-organizing teams composed of individuals that manage their own workload, shifts, um, or the work among themselves based on uh, need and best fit and participate in team decision making. Self-organizing teams are called uh, to meet the new challenges and they manage their own work around the details of the task at hand. Um, what remains commons, common in those teams um, probably is the shared focus, mutual trust, and respect, very important, I would say, uh, foundations in order to create the next generation of self-organizing teams. 
Uh, as more organizations tackle the challenge of uh, bringing an al um, probably an agile mindset and culture to life through the implementation of agile methods and tools, the one thing that for sure will occur and we will face is the change management. And this will play a critical role. Um, in most of the companies, change management is where you identify that you've, you might have a breakdown in order to make a breakthrough. Collaboration and teamwork is also essential. Uh, through, through that model of, of, uh, of self-organizing teams, you will see that hierarchies change. And as we said in, 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 in my uh, jargon, uh, HR, we call these uh, spaghetti organizations. They don't have a higher, the, the normal hierarchy, the structure we, we know so far. Um, in the absence of, of that kind of hierarchy, it is up to the individual and, uh, to communicate with one another and work together. As a result of a self-organizing team, uh, this is uh, uh, how to embrace a highly collaborative style of working and operate as a true unit. This needs some other skills to be evolved. Trust and respect, as we said. For, uh, for, for, for the self-organizing teams, this is particularly important. Uh, and members need to trust each other and need to, 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 to trust the skills of the others uh, in order to, to be able to get the job done, um, which, is, which is essential everybody to contribute their own piece in order to create the, 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 the whole project at the end and, and collate every piece together. Um, so this, this is what, uh, with, with the absence of a manager, it holds everyone accountable to do their, their job timely and, and, and the high, higher standards. Additionally, team members must respect the opinions of others and work together to find uh, compromises to differing views. Of course, you are not on the table. You just need to use either technology, emails or video conferences in order to manage any conflicts as well or any differing views. And where motivation comes from. Exactly. This, 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 is, this, is, this is part of um, uh, how you keep those teams engaged and productive. Receiving a, a new assignment and completing it is, is, is definitely one thing. Going out to find work and setting your own timeline, that's quite another. And the latter is what requires a high level of motivation. Of course, in order to, to create that level of, of, uh, uh, of work environment, important is to have ownership and commitment. It is crucial that those who are part of a self-organizing team demonstrate uh, a strong sense of ownership of tasks to be valuable cog in the wheel of agile working. What I, I would say more in plain words will be, I need someone to have the end-to-end responsibility of a task. With that, companies will have an increased expectations from employees. Different generations appreciate different facets of a work uh, from home lifestyle and will want probably to those things um, uh, to choose uh, for future em employment. Uh, definitely you will look, uh, when you start looking for your next employer, uh, about their social responsibility programs, flexibility in work, um, um, and in general, work from home uh, uh, pro uh, abilities. So this is something that uh, we're going to have to see from the graduates who come into the work uh, workplace now. Uh, Generation X and Generation Z handles remote work differently. Generation X has more life and professional experience that millennials and Generation Z individuals can learn from, which imminently uh, become hygiene factors such as flexibility, remote working, etc. Uh, recent studies uh, indicate that remote workers are uh, actually more productive, uh, and I, I think that's true within um, I, I would say the, the framework we discussed of, of putting some, some basics uh, of 
uh, routine in order to, to make this happen and not derail uh, against your work-life balance. Um, so just to give you a, just to give you an idea about the, the, the studies we talked, uh, remote employees work uh, probably an additional 1.4 more days per month, which this is uh, approximately 17 more days a year, just because they work from home. Um, office workers tend to be a bit more unproductive by 10 minutes every day, and this probably does not include any lunch breaks uh, or, um, or any coffee breaks. Uh, whereas remote employees seem to be 10, 10 minutes more uh, efficient uh, within the same day. Um, so actually 15% of remote workers said that they feel much better because they don't have any interruption while in the office from, uh, um, from, from bosses or from colleagues. Which is, which is quite crucial on, 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 on how you put together your thoughts and, and you concentrate in order to uh, have your project delivered. So uh, not only is the, is the expectations from uh, the employers, but the employees themselves are operating at a much higher productivity rate than their office-based counterparts. So uh, they, they, Within that sphere and working from home, it has all, it brings also some benefits. One of the benefits is the trend towards sustainability. Um, I'm not going to bother you with, with a lot of data here, but uh, just the basic thing is that remote work takes mental and physical stress out of going to a, an office, but it, it also positively affects the environment. Not only does working from home give employees more flexibility and freedom when it comes to achieving a work-life balance, but it can also help uh, them become better citizens as they achieve their environmental goals. Imagine like uh, it is well known that uh, remote employees who do not have to commute every day to go to work usually, uh, of course, have smaller carbon footprints. Um, as more sectors now begin to recognize telecommuting and remote work as a viable way to combat traffic congestion and harmful emissions, I'm going to give you two examples of, um, of, of two big companies that they have applied that. Xerox has applied that in 2014 with 7,000 employees, adding another 1,000 employees uh, in 2015. Um, decreasing dramatically uh, their, um, their, their, their carbon emission, uh, of course, because nobody was commuting at that time. Uh, and also um, uh, Dell has followed the same with a plan to have 50,000 employees by the end of this year um, uh, in full remote, uh, full remote work. Um, and, and that's logical because if you take as an example that an average employee commuting to work, say for 30 minutes approximately every day, or maybe five hours uh, uh, per week uh, using the car. Um, if you reduce that, then you probably reduce the, the carbon emission for this only employee by 20%. Um, just to... Uh, just to give you an understanding a bit more um, um, how, how this, this, this scheme works, uh, remote work. Uh, the scheme equips staff actually, basically, uh, what it needs someone to do that, that remote work is that the scheme equips staff with conference calling, video calling software, and training as well that is needed to conduct uh, the majority of the meetings uh, remotely. Um, we all know that uh, at least especially for us being in the UAE, that uh, private transport is one of the world's biggest sources of greenhouse gases uh, with emissions rising every year. So in, in the UAE, we extensively use our cars to commute uh, to work. So consider that uh, decreasing that, even we have seen uh, the, the uh, results of uh, not commuting these days or, or due to the lockdown, even the atmosphere has cleared, the water is, is, is more clear now. So we, we actually do well to the environment. Um, any change, though, has an impact. Uh, uh, and, and when I say an impact, uh, here we, we might talk about real estate. Uh, Things like that companies will not need any more the same size or volume of offices worldwide. Hot desking has also become a trend and saves a lot of money in rents and utilities. It creates uh, probably another issue. The issue is that 
we don't. It, it seems that we don't need uh, anymore uh, uh, that kind of space, and probably uh, any spare space that has been now created, it's it's uh, it, it might be a reason why real estate might face a crisis. Prices might go down, and commercial real estate might find to uh, uh, to, to 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 need to change to something different. And that's because every change has a cause and effect. Um, with, with, with that, I would like to conclude my talk today. Um, I, I, do, I, do, I do a lot of hobbies and uh, one of my hobbies is sailing. I'm, I'm coming from Greece, this is part of uh, our inheritance with the sea. Uh, one thing I, I like to say, as, as used as a proverb, is that uh, I cannot change the wind, but I can trim the sails. So in those days we live now, I think we should not let this crisis get wasted and seize the opportunity to become better and maybe wiser. With that, I would like to thank you all, the uh, American University of Sharjah, uh, you also for uh, providing this platform and this actually great opportunity for me to connect with, with you, the talented students and uh, the alumni. I would like to wish you all the best and I look forward to welcoming you to opportunities with uh, Crescent Enterprises or even the wider group. I believe that soon things will come better and we are all going to be able to meet again. And just one thing, we are all together in this one. Thank you very much.